everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now on this planet there are plenty of animals that are closely related to each other. In some cases they're so closely related that they can actually interbreed and create hybrid animals. Some of these hybrids occur naturally in the wild, and others are found in zoos, or have been intentionally created by humans. In today's video I'll be going through just a few of these hybrid animals, as I'll be going through five hybrid animals from around the world. And for our first parent species we'll be heading to the Arctic Circle, as we have the polar bear. The polar bear is the largest extant species of bear, and is the world's largest largest land carnivore, as males can weigh a whopping 700 kilograms and view almost anything as a food source. These bears are the most carnivorous of all the bear species, and their main prey items are ringed seals and bearded seals. To help them hunt in their icy homes, they have a keen sense of smell, as they're known to smell their prey up to a kilometer away, and they're known to travel large distances to track them down. Today the polar bear is listed as vulnerable to extinction, mainly due down to habitat loss caused by climate change, and these bears usually hunt on sea ice, which is quickly disappearing. Because of this habitat habitat loss some bears have been forced southwards, where they may run into our second parent species, the grizzly bear. The grizzly bear is a subspecies of brown bear inhabiting North America, but it can trace its roots back to Eurasia, as brown bears originated in a different continent and travelled to North America around 50,000 years ago. Although bears are famous for eating fish and large mammals, they are actually omnivores. They eat a variety of herbs, berries and roots, as they try and put on fat before their hibernation. Although grizzly bears can be very dangerous, it's very rare for them to actively hunt humans. Most bear attacks result from a bear that's been surprised at very close range, or from a female grizzly protecting her offspring. In fact, more grizzlies are killed by humans than grizzlies killing humans, as they are still actively hunted, but luckily their populations are stable. The polar bear and the grizzly bear are actually very closely related, as the polar bear diverged from the brown bear around 150,000 to 400,000 years ago. This close relation means that they can actually breed with each other and create pizzly bears. This hybrid bear is very rare, but has occurred both in the wild and in captivity. In 2006, a strange looking bear was shot in the Canadian Arctic, and after DNA testing it was found out to be a hybrid. Since then the number of confirmed hybrids has risen to eight, all of them descending from the same female polar bear. There are also a few pizzly bears in zoos around the world, and unfortunately at one zoo in Germany, one of these creatures had to be shot as it escaped from its enclosure. But with the increase in melting of sea ice, we may see more pizzly bears in the future. Before our next parent species, we'll be heading over to the Indo-Pacific, as we have the giant group. Now the giant grouper is one of the largest extant species of bony fish, and is normally associated with reefs and rocky areas. The giant grouper, also known as the Queensland grouper, should not be confused with the goliath grouper. This species is a little smaller, and is found in the Atlantic Ocean. This species can reach a maximum size of around 2.7 meters, or around 9.1 feet. It puts its size to great use feeding on other fishes, sharks, crustaceans, and even juvenile sea turtles. Despite its large size, this species is actually listed as vulnerable to extinction. This is mainly due down to overfishing, as it's considered a delicacy in large parts of Asia, and is also thought to have medicinal qualities. But far away from our first parent fish, we'll move over to the western Atlantic Ocean, as we have the tiger grouper. Now this grouper is a lot smaller than the giant grouper, reaching a maximum size of around a metre or 40 inches long. As they are a lot smaller than the giant grouper, they aren't able to take on as many big animals, and tend to feed mainly on other fish. Despite their many differences, these two species of fish can actually interbreed, and have created a hybrid grouper or also known as the pearl grouper, but as these two species live in completely different parts of the world, this hybrid grouper was created in a lab. These hybrids were created for aquaculture, as these fish grow very quickly and are more disease resistant than their parent fishes. Unfortunately in recent years many of these hybrid groupers have escaped and have now become invasive species, as in Singapore there is now a large invasive population and these fish have been known to compete with the native species and there's even a risk they may hybridize with other fish. So although it's a very interesting discovery, these hybrids have the potential potential to take over an ecosystem. Before our next parent species we'll be heading to eastern and southern Africa, as we have the zebra. The zebra is one of the most interesting equine animals, mainly due down to their striking patterns. There are currently three species of zebra alive today, with one subspecies driven to extinction in the 19th century. These three species can be found in a variety of habitats, from savannas, grasslands, shrublands, and even woodlands. In these areas zebras are primarily grazers, feeding on a wide variety of different grasses. As there are numerous large predators in Africa, the zebra needs some impressive speed to escape predators, as they can run at speeds of 65 kilometers per hour, making them one of the fastest mammals in Africa. But our next parent species isn't exactly wild, as it is the donkey. The donkey is a domesticated animal in the horse family, which derives from the African wild ass. The donkey has been a working animal for at least 5,000 years, and they're thought to be around 40 million in the world today. Most of these donkeys are in underdeveloped countries, and are sometimes unfortunately overworked. The African wild ass is actually very close 
related to the zebras, and because of this the donkey is able to interbreed with the zebras, creating a zonkey. As donkeys are domesticated, these animals only occur in captivity, and take on characteristics from both parents. Although this hybrid may seem strange at first, many members of the horse family can actually interbreed with each other, creating a wide range of other animals. So really this hybrid is just one of many in the horse family. But for our next parent species, we'll be heading to both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, as we have the green sea turtle. These turtles can be found in a wide variety of habitats, but tend to prefer shallower areas, where they are mostly seen feeding on seagrasses. Although it's called the green sea turtle, there are actually two distinct populations. The Atlantic and West Pacific sea turtles tend to be a lot lighter, whereas the East and Pacific green sea turtles tend to be a lot darker, and are sometimes even black in coloration. Unfortunately today this species is listed as endangered, mainly due down to a decrease in suitable nesting sites, and pollution affecting the growth of seagrass beds. But for our next parent, we'll be heading to all oceans worldwide, as we have the hawksbill sea turtle. This sea turtle is the only species with a worldwide distribution, and although it may look similar to many other sea turtles, it is quite unique. It got its name because of its bill, it's said to look like that of a hawk. But this bill isn't just for show, as they're omnivorous, mainly feeding on algae, jellyfish, and sea sponges, as these sea sponges make up around 70-95% to of their diets, and their pointed bill helps them to get at these food items. Unfortunately, like the green sea turtle, this species is also threatened, as they're currently listed as critically endangered, mainly due down to the same reasons that the green sea turtle is endangered. And although it is very rare, these two species can actually interbreed. This hybridization is completely natural, and in 2020 a hybrid sea turtle named Maisie was rescued in the Florida Keys. Maisie was nursed back to health, and eventually released back into the ocean. She had a tracking tag fixed to her carapace, which will track her progress along her migration. And because of her parents' perils in the wild, this has to be one of the rarest hybrids out there. But for one of our final parents, we'll be heading back over to Africa, as we have the lion. The lion is the most famous of the big cats, as the lion is an apex keystone predator, hunting in the grasslands and savannas of Africa for many of the large mammals that live there. The lion has a very long and complicated history with humans. For thousands of years, lions have both hunted humans, and humans have hunted lions. Lions have been kept in captivity since the times of the Roman Empire, and are of course still common in zoos today. In zoos is where they most commonly come into contact with our second parent, the tiger. The tiger is the largest living cat species, and can be found in both South and Eastern Asia. Tigers have been around for at least 2 million years, but unfortunately thanks to humans they could disappear in the next 100 years, as over the past 150 years their range has shrunk by nearly 95%, and they're thought to only be around 3,900 tigers left in the wild. In fact, there are more tigers in captivity in the US than there are left in the wild, as it's estimated that there are around 5,000 captive tigers in the US. In their native range, they are efficient predators, mainly feeding on deer and wild boar. But as I'm sure many of you already know, these two big cats can interbreed to create the liger. The liger is the offspring of a male lion and a female tiger, and is the largest of all known extinct felines. These ligers take characteristics from both parents, and have even taken behaviours from both parents, as they're known to very much enjoy swimming, and are also quite sociable just like lions. Ligers have garnered a bad reputation, as they're normally bred in the same zoos that keep large quantities of tigers, so this really has to go down as one of the largest hybrids in the world. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other video suggestions, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.